Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the properties of ionic compounds and the first property we're going to look at is the melting point. So I've got an ionic substance here, salt, which is sodium chloride, made of sodium ions joined to chloride ions and I'm going to put some of this ionic salt, the sodium chloride, in one evaporating dish and I'm going to compare that to something that looks very similar, which is sugar. And I'm going to see what happens to the two when I start to heat them up. And we're going to come back to that in a few minutes and see if there's much of a difference. So a few minutes in, we can see that the salt is unaffected because it's got a very high melting point, it's an ionic compound. So we could leave that on there all day and it's still not going to melt. The sugar, although it looks very similar to salt, is melting quite easily, just after a few minutes. And that's because sugar is a simple covalent compound, rather than it being ionic. So what we've learned from this is that the salt, which is an ionic compound, has a high melting point. Now the reason that salt and all of the ionic compounds have got a high melting point and a high boiling point is the positive and negative ions attract each other with strong electrostatic forces. So you need to put a lot of heat energy in to break apart those forces to allow the substance to melt where the ions are then free to move around rather than being stuck tightly together in that rigid structure. And we must remember that this, the ions would be in a 3D structure, like this, and we call this an ionic lattice. This regular arrangement of ions in neat rows in three dimensions, that's called a giant ionic lattice. And in practice, that would be made of thousands of ions. So now we're going to test whether an ionic compound can conduct electricity. So I've got here some sodium chloride and I've got a power pack connected to a bulb and here we've got two carbon electrodes. So let's see what happens when we try and get the electricity to flow across this ionic compound. Will the bulb light up? Well as you can see, when it's a solid, the ionic compound can't conduct electricity. Electricity isn't flowing between these two carbon rods. And the reason for that is the ions are held in place by those strong electrostatic forces. So the ions are fixed in position and aren't able to move. And electricity is when you've got charged particles flowing along. So these charged particles, the positive sodium ions and the negative chloride ions are fixed in place. So that's why it doesn't conduct electricity as a solid. This time we're going to make up the ionic compound into a solution. So we're going to add some of the sodium chloride to water and the first thing to notice is it does actually dissolve. It's quite easy to get sodium chloride to dissolve in water and that's common of most ionic compounds. And then we're going to try and put electricity through this solution. Now I'm keeping the voltage very low by using this power pack, that's what makes it safe please don't ever try putting electricity through water at home because it could be fatal. So let's see this time what happens, can it conduct electricity? So the electrodes are going in and as you can see the bulbs lighting up, so electricity, is, the current is flowing down the wires, it's flowing across the solution and making the bulb light up. And that's because now that we've dissolved the sodium chloride, those ions that were held tightly placed in that ionic lattice are now free to move. So the positive ions can go one way, the negative ions can go the other, and that flow of ions is the electric current. So just to recap, ionic compounds can't conduct electricity when solid, but they can when they're in solution. And also, if you make the ionic compound into a liquid by melting it, it will also conduct electricity then as well because then, once again, the ions are free to move. Let's summarise what we know about ionic compounds. Remember, the ions are held together 
in a giant ionic lattice by those strong electrostatic forces of attraction. So in terms of their properties, ionic compounds dissolve in water. They have a high melting point and high boiling point, And that's because the ions are held in place by strong electrostatic forces of attraction. And those strong forces need a lot of energy to break them. They also don't conduct electricity when solid. And that's because the ions are not free to move. But they do conduct electricity when dissolved in water or when molten. And that's because the ions are then free to move. So if you've liked the video, please remember to subscribe and tell your friends about it on social media. Thank you for watching.